G'day ladies and gents, and welcome back to Cold Waters with Mags. So, we managed to dodge two Soviet submarine patrols in the Norwegian Sea, and we finally managed to intercept another Soviet supply fleet on the surface. I'm pretty sure at this point that this is the correct one, although I'm not 100% sure. It is a little bit smaller than the previous fleets. However, unfortunately, due to dodging the submarine patrols, we ended up steaming into this fleet at 20 knots. So why I went silent the second I arrived on zone, I was pretty sure before we even begun the engagement that they had at least some idea that I was there. And that made things a hell of a lot more interesting. I hope you enjoy. All right, so we're getting active sonar pings down this line. And that one there, that'll be the rigger. There's one over here, so we may have a missing ship that's over here. <coughs> it's an escort, though. The Chilkin is our primary target. We've got to deal with the Chilkin first. Alright, what we'll do... Everything is surface running. Port torpedo tubes first. Tube one away. Give it three seconds. There's a counter launch. We've already got counter launches. Alright, no point messing around. Short launches on all tubes. Torpedoes to the surface. Mosses away. They're closer than expected. Way closer than expected. Um, I hope we don't break any wires. Actually, we'll have to set our wires beforehand. We're pulling the... Uh... Set a spread first. Yeah, that's good enough. All right. Making a hard right turn. I'm going to try and get in underneath their torps. Hopefully, we won't break the wires. So we'll completely reverse our heading. There is a good chance that these will snap, though. And we have a Sierra... Yeah, it's a new one. Sierra 4 is now in the mix as well. If we keep the wires, I'm going to take the Chilkin out of the centre of the group. Boom, boom. Torpedoes going live. Looks like dominant line here on Sierra... F oh, it's not... Yeah, dominant line here on Sierra 4. But no clear on what it is at this point. Could be anything. I'll let it refine a little bit first. So yeah, for that them to counter-launch at that distance... While we're silent from the opposing side, they were listening hard. They were aware that we were here. Our uh, initial start for this particular engagement wasn't great. Alright, so the Chilkin. Tune one out, and you can go for the Grister. Counter torps are in the water, and some of these counter torps are going to be heading for us as well. The only upside is. Grista was much closer than expected. And that was a beacon hitting the surface. Where is that? That'll be very close to us. So we now have um, uh, aerial dropped sonar. Con sonar lost contact. Sierra six, last bearing one. Torpedo out. That torpedo's gone for the moss. It could still swing around and pick us up. Here it comes. Boom, Grister's down. Alright, so that gets rid of the close one. That gets rid of one of their fast movers. 
perfect kill shot. Alright, let's reload that tube, because we're going to need that. Chilkin we have to take in this initial volley. Sierra 4 doesn't appear to be backing off. We are getting a more defined line now, so... That is actually looking pretty close. That is actually very close. Just watch for the moment and see exactly what this torp's going to do. Hopefully it continues to spiral and doesn't pick us up, but it's quite possible. Alright, for the moment it seems to be just spiralling. Now the Ugra should get detected next. Hopefully. Yep, torpedoes reacquired on the moss and then just reapproaching. So that's good. It's going to drag that torpedo away from us. So the moss was a good play. It's keeping that torpedo away for the moment. And the closest ship that can detect us has been sunk already. So three is going to take out the Ugra. Or at least that's going to be the hope. And then one is going to hit the Chilkin, hopefully in the center. Speed's only 16, so that shouldn't be too hard to intercept. That is surface uh, rocket launch torpedoes hitting the water. Or surface dropped. They could be dropped from an aircraft, or somebody could have fired them. But actually, more likely dropped from an aircraft. Yep. No, that's the torpedo, our spiralling one, so we haven't detected any new torpedoes yet. Alright, so Torpedo 3 has acquired the Ugra. I'm leaving one alone because it hasn't broken its wire. We should really get Torpedo 4 under the way as well. Actually, at this point... Oh, I want to make sure... Before we fire that, I want to make sure we've got our course locked in. And I want to make sure one has acquired the Chilkin. And then we can redeploy the Toad and see if we can get a better look at everything else that's out there at the moment. Here comes the Torp. Alright, so that is the Ugra out. pretty cool from this angle. Alright, so we're going to get Torpedo 1 and now we can turn it in and it should immediately acquire the Chilkin. Nice. Looks like we have confirmed that is the Ugra. So we do need to get the Ugra. In fact, looking at its position, we might only make a very small course change here before we deploy the Toad to track the Ugra, and then we'll get our torpedoes once Tube 2 is done out and on the way and see if we can intercept it. Now, we still don't have six. Now, due to our issues with the uh, the Chilkins last time, I am going to take some manual control here, and we are going to do some guidance. And guide the torpedo into the midships and see if we can take her out in one hit, rather than hitting her in the bum. Oh, 
Okay. We did not sink the Chilkin in one hit, so we are going to have to send another torpedo that way. But that should slow her down. Total ray deployed and. Angle. These ones will be straight out, so we're going to fire. Two is away. Turn. And we're sending it on its way. Torpedo detected all the way over here. That must be one of the aerial drop torps. Alright, so that's going to go for the Chilkin. Now, what is her current speed? She's down to five knots, so we didn't sink her, but she felt us. Oh, look at that list. She may actually sink before a torpedo gets there. Uh, there was qu questions and comments that popped up in the last uh, the, the last video and exactly how the damage modeling for the ship's done. They do have a health bar system, as far as I can tell, but there is obviously some rudimentary damage modeling going on below the systems, as much as it's only a, a 2D image that indicates a torpedo hit, because you do get things like the ship listing to the left after taking a hit on the left as it floods. So obviously there is some flooding calculation done inside. I'm not actually sure for all the time that I've been playing this how in-depth it is, but hits to the rear will tend to take out the engines. You will get lists when you hit the ship on the left or right hand side as it floods. It will go bum down or nose down depending on which section you hit. If you hit somewhere that is likely to carry a lot of stores on say a larger warship, it can potentially cause the entire ship to go up in a single hit on a ship that may traditionally take two or three torpedoes to actually take down. So there is something more advanced than just a health bar system. I do think the health bar system is probably the overall defining thing here. But, um, yeah, there is something else going on underneath the system as well. And it's quite likely that's going to sink before our ship, our, our torpedo, ever actually gets there. Which is fine, because we've got a second target over here in the form of the rigger, and I have no idea what Sierra 6 is. I am probably going to have to hop a radar for that. Alright, so, Torpedo 3 has acquired the Ugra. I'm holding Torpedo 1 still, just in case the, uh... In case 3 doesn't actually take out Ugra in one hit, although it should. We had pretty good luck here. And I'm still surprised that Chilkin is still on the surface. I mean, she's still listing like all hell, but she's still floating. Which is... interesting, to say the least. Alright, torpedo approaching in on Ugra. is it? There it is. Detonation. Ugra is down. Alright, so that's another one down. So there's now nothing too close to us at this point. Once we've taken out Chilkin, I might actually head to the surface and pop a radar and find out what Sierra 6 is, because we've lost it completely, and I am concerned it may be one of the transports that has just turned and run faster than everything else. We've got eyes on the rigger. 61. We know it's roughly there hanging around with the Chilkin as well. So, Torpedo 2 is about to go active. Gun, fire control, weapon acquired. Looks like we're pretty close, too close, so we've actually... There we go. We're on the Chilkin. Alright, so that's a kill that's a killing blow for the Chulkin right there. There's no way known that torpedo is going to miss. So I'm actually going to drop the Y here and I'm gonna straight reload a new tube. I'm just gonna leave that one alone. Because we've got these three targets. Sierra 6 I've completely lost. We've got the rigger over here and we have a Sierra 7. And I don't know what they are, so what I'm gonna do. Retract Toad Array. New course. I'm gonna to go to periscope depth. 
I need to know what Sierra 7 and Sierra 6 is. I suspect Sierra 6 is going to be a cargo ship that we've lost. Sierra 7, I have no idea about. She is so fresh. There goes the Chilkin. She gave us a good fight. But that was going to happen regardless. Alright, so that leaves us with two left. We've got one confirmed escort and two unknowns. Sierra 7's the only one we have any kind of signal on at the moment. We've only got really one clear dominant line. Potential second there. Possibly a two. Could be a double line there. That could be a whale. Not 100%, but that could actually just be a whale. Hopefully it is. Oh, and we're 95 on the rigger at the moment. So I am going to send a tube, uh, to send one of our torpedoes straight down for the moment to intercept the rigger. And get it underway before we've even popped the radar. Currently at 350 feet. Gone helm, steady course. I'd go for the uh, go for the periscope rather than the radar, but um, although we could we could just use the periscope first just to confirm before we go active. Periscope is up. Let's see if we can confirm just for a start. So we're looking at 149. There's 149, and there is our mark. Our second target, S7. Alright, scope down. Potential. Whatever it is, it's submerged. So, it could potentially still be a whale or it could be a submarine. No. I'm marking Sierra 7 as a humpback. It's the only thing it corresponds with. It doesn't line up with any submarine, but it's not something that's on the surface. Sierra 6 is apparently a lot closer than we thought, too. Screw it, what's it gonna hurt? Going active. Cannon, there it is. All right, so radar down. Go 500. That's all we needed. All right, so we've got a cannon and a rigger, and that is potentially a humpback that we've got ahead of us at the moment. There we go, confirmed humpback whale. And a hell of a lot closer than we thought, too. Mm -hmm. 
No torpedo. Bad torpedo. We do not try and sink the non-Soviet humpback whale, okay? That is not what you do. We find and sink the cannon. Alright, we might have to go active here. Where the hell is it? There it is. Alright, so there is the active... Uh, there is the cannon. Stop trying to sink the humpback. You have a target. That one. I really have to wonder whether or not this humpback whale realises that at the moment it is actually acting as a countermeasure for the Soviets. Alright, Torpedo has acquired the cannon. 4,500 tons, we shouldn't have to do any manual guidance on this one. As soon as it hits, that should be the end of it. It should break this thing's back. And Rigger is about here. So we almost got you. We've almost cleared the board here. Cannon's running as fast as it possibly can at the moment, trying to outrun the torpedo, which it has no chance of doing. That's the cannon done. Alright, Torpedo 3 about to go live and has already acquired. So we got that one lined up absolutely perfectly. There's the rig up. Alright, so let's have a look here. Torpedo's already surface running. No visual on the rigger from 3D yet. It should pop in any second. Solutions at 95. There it is. Looks like it's going to get sunk at almost the same point the Chilkin did. Bloody close overall. Well, that stacks them up nicely, and that should be everything inside of the combat area now. We've got some ice on the surface over here, and that's everything. Hopefully, that is our convoy this time. All right, so we have confirmation: Grisha three was sunk, the rigger was sunk, cannon, the two Ugras, and the Chilkin. So 48,500 tons total down. We've still got 13 Mark 38s left on board, so we're doing okay with torpedoes. This better have bloody been it. This was it. All right. So good to hear you intercepted and destroyed the enemy replenishment forces. Keep up the good work. Further orders to be transmitted on this downlink. Await additional orders on this downlink. Nice. Okay, so this was the smallest fleet that we had to face. But that was the correct one. We, we've sunk nearly 200,000 tons of shipping in order to get that group. Alright, so let's see what we got here. Navy moves in. NATO warships and submarines have taken up several new strategic positions, including some around Eastern Norwegian Sea in response to significantly reduced Soviet naval activity. Sources close to the Pentagon say that the war is taking a heavy toll on the enemy naval operations. That is an understatement, considering the amount of ships I've put on the bottom. 
and that their supply lines continue to be heavily strained. Recent NATO gains in sea have decreased the numbers of warships needed to maintain control in several regions. Many vessels in these regions have rapidly been reassigned to escort duties to better protect convoys carrying much-needed arms and armor and men from the United States and the United Kingdom. Just doing my job. Okay, so here's our new orders to USS Philadelphia, SSN 690. Intelligence believes that an enemy cruise missile submarines after a series of successful operations against our convoys along the Norwegian coast will be returning to their bases in and around Gromenka. Locate and sink the submarines. Cool. Alright, so we get to go sub hunting. Anyways, ladies and gents. Hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you very much for watching. Cold Waters will be returning in the very near future, of course. And until next time, remember to click that like button if you did. Share and subscribe if you want to see more. And as always, take care.